In this video, I'm going to show you how to calculate diluted earnings per share when there's convertible preferred shares outstanding. Now, if you remember, here's our formula for calculating basic earnings per share. We take a company's net income, we subtract any preferred dividends, and we divide that by the weighted average number of common shares outstanding during the period. Now, we're going to need to make a couple of adjustments to both the numerator and the denominator when we have convertible preferred share, uh, shares of stock outstanding, we're trying to calculate diluted earnings per share. First of all, in the numerator, we are not going to subtract the preferred dividends. Why? Because when we're calculating diluted earnings per share, we're going to assume that those preferred shareholders had converted their preferred shares to common shares at the beginning of the period. Thus, we don't need to pay them any preferred dividends because they would have no longer been preferred shareholders. And then in the denominator, we're going to need to add the number of new common shares from that preferred stock conversion. Okay, so if the preferred shareholders are converting their shares into common shares, we're going to assume the company is going to issue new common shares. So the denominator is going to go up, right? And then our numerator is going to be higher as well because we're not going to be subtracting any preferred dividends. So let's do an example with some actual numbers. Let's take the company Shower Curtain Pockets and they make a product which I find a bit unusual, but you might like. But uh, you basically got a shower curtain with your pockets for where you're going to hang your iPad and other electronic devices so they don't get wet when you're in the shower. In my opinion, if you're that addicted to electronics, you have a problem, and I encourage you to see a counselor. All right, so shower curtain pockets had 60,000 shares of common stock issued and outstanding on January 1st, 2023. Now, let's assume that there were no changes in the number of common shares during 2023. So they didn't issue any more common shares. Uh, they didn't repurchase any common shares, anything like that. But this company also has some convertible preferred stock outstanding. So they have 40,000 shares of convertible preferred stock. And let's just assume that each one of those shares, each of those 40,000 shares of convertible preferred stock can be converted to one share of common stock. So basically, if everyone who's holding these convertible preferred shares was to say, you know what, I want to convert, then there would be 40,000 additional new shares of common stock. So it's a one-to-one -one ratio. One share convertible preferred stock can be converted to one common share. So during 2023, the company declared and paid $120,000 of cash dividends to its preferred shareholders. That's going to be an adjustment in the numerator because when we calculate diluted per earnings per share, we're not going to subtract that, whereas we do subtract it when we calculate basic earnings per share. But we're going to get to that momentarily. Finally, our net income, $2,520,000 uh, for 2023. So the question is, what was the company's basic earnings per share and what was the company's diluted earnings per share for the year ended December 31st, 2023? So let's get to the calculations. We're going to use the formulas that I showed you before. Okay. So for the basic earnings per share, we'll do that first. We've got our net income, 2520000 That's just given. Subtract the preferred dividends, right? $120,000 of preferred dividends. So we get to 2,400,000 in our numerator, divide that by the number of common shares outstanding during the period, which was 60,000, gets us to a basic earnings per share of $40. Now, our diluted earnings per share, again, we got an adjustment to the numerator and then also the denominator. In the numerator, we are not subtracting the preferred dividends. So our numerator is just going to be 2520000 We are not subtracting that 120000 Why? Because we're assuming as of the beginning of the period, okay, the beginning of the period, January 1st, we're assuming that those preferred shareholders had converted their shares to common shares. They didn't actually do that, but we're doing a hypothetical. We're assuming had they converted their shares at the beginning of the period, the company would not have had to pay any preferred dividends, so we don't need to subtract preferred dividends. So 2520000 divide that by number of common shares outstanding, plus we're going to have an additional 40,000 shares that are going to be out there floating around, common shares. Why? Because the preferred shareholders have 40,000 preferred shares. We assume they can convert each one of those to a common share. So we assume that, that, that the conversion did happen January 1st, and we assume that the company issued new shares of common stock uh, to satisfy that conversion. So now our denominator is going to be 100,000. So we take the 2520000 
we divide it by 100,000, and we get to a diluted earnings per share of $25.20.